Mike's new clinger. Cleaner? Oh, uh, I mean your ringer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Marco, what did I just buy? An apartment building. During the pandemic, when we were stuck at home, me, like many investors, we scoured the real estate listings here for deals. I spent hundreds of hours finding this deal, but this house was special in that it was stopped in the middle of a complete renovation. Well, I'm a man, and I've been trying my hands, doing the best that I can, keep getting by. But I fell alone, and though my closet's got bones, with only half of them known, they're falling out. Please take these chains, take my heart, spin it. The sun. And after all that I've done, probably should have been shot. I stand at all. Well, he used to say, Well, Daddy, why don't you pray? Though my spirit's afraid, I'm pulling through. Please take these chains, take my heart, spin it. Got a feeling, gotta go Can't see where the light is shown With a little help Please take my So why am I making this YouTube uh, channel documenting uh, my entire entrepreneurial experience um, here? Um, yeah, for a long time, I really want to document um, my entrepreneurial journey here in Germany. I want to, the reason why I want to do this was because on YouTube, we have this plethora of YouTube scammers and gurus that have proliferated since the pandemic. Um, talking about your Andrew Tates, your Iman Gadzis, your, um, uh, to a lesser extent, Meet Kevins and there's just, YouTube has become recently a cesspit of bad business advice. So, a lot of these YouTubers uh, follow the same principle of using uh, these overpriced courses. You know, Andrew Tate's course is not overpriced, his $50 per month uh, program. But he also has an overpriced option, the $20,000 whatever um, club that he has. I forgot the name of it. Um, but all of these YouTubers basically have these courses, overpriced courses. So I want to be one of these YouTubers uh, that 
helps younger people because it's mostly younger people that uh, take this bad advice. And it, from my experience living here in Germany, it's always the same people that believe these idiots on YouTube um, that believe the hype of Andrew Tate or, or Iman Gazi or you know these people. Uh, it's always the same people in my experience. They're always poor and dumb, uneducated, and young, uneducated people. They're usually people that never went to university. They're usually people that didn't grow up with any money. So they didn't grow up in the suburbs of New York or London like, you know, <laughs> I grew up in. Um, and they usually, you know, not educated. Uh, they didn't go to university. Um, one thing that I've noticed proliferating these days is a lot of people are not going to university anymore. I'm going. Um, I'm a very traditional guy and even though I didn't go a traditional career path, um, going to big tech like a lot of my colleagues did and my fellow students, I don't, I don't discount the importance of university. Um, university is, it's different than high school. It, it teaches you how to, how the world works and it's really vital in learning how to make money uh, the right way. And by the right way, I mean not scamming people. <laughs> I, it's amazing that I have to explain this in 2023, but uh, it's not okay to scam people. And scamming means um, promising something that you know is not going to deliver. That's basically you know, how a scam um, is produced. So... Andrew Tate and Iman Ghazi and, the, and me, Kevin, they know that the likelihood of you succeeding with their advice is low. They're not stupid. They're not that dumb. If they're smart enough that they calculated in making these scammy courses, they're smart enough to know that the probability of success is extremely low. Um, at the end of the day, a $10,000 course is not going to make you rich. And the end of the day, no course, doesn't matter if you pay a million dollars or a mentor, is going to walk you through the doors of success. Ultimately, it's going to take hard work. That's the only way to success. I mean, that's, that's the truth. That's the sad truth. There's no shortcuts. There's no drop shipping method or fancy social media marketing agency bullshit. None of that stuff is going to work. I'm, sh I'm telling you, <laughs> as someone who's been around uh, a lot of entrepreneurs and my family, most of the men in my family are entrepreneurs or doctors or lawyers. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that you see on YouTube is just pure nonsense. So I'm not going to teach you any lessons. Uh, I'm not going to sell you courses, $10,000 courses, or even $100 courses. I'm going to just show you how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to teach by example. And I advise you not to just follow dumbly as how I do it, but take my guide and take the way that I, my path, and modify it to your uh, situation, your circumstance because your circumstance will be different you know I chose New York City and Berlin as my um, capitals for my business but it could easily be two other cities or it could be some other type of situation and it could also not involve tech businesses and tr um, conventional business and real estate it could be three other types of uh, approaches to business so I'm not saying that my way is the only way success but it's my way and I'm I mean I'm fairly certain that it will work uh, it's just my execution how good my execution is gonna be uh, that's gonna determine how successful I will be but I'm sure that this methodology will work 
just from experience and um, from my successes in the past and seeing other people's successes that I know personally. So, so like I said, it's always the poor, the dumb, and the young that fall for these uh, YouTube gurus, these scammers, these social media hucksters, um, these crypto pump and dump scams, these Forex drop shifting <laughs> nonsense. I mean, all of it is just nonsense. I mean, if you s explain these business ideas, these TikTok, YouTube, Instagram business advice uh, ideas to a traditional businessman, even to Bill Gates or I mean, even someone less traditional like a Mark Zuckerberg, they're going to laugh. I mean, none of these ideas are anything new. I mean, and you will, that doesn't mean you won't get some success out of it. Uh, my mentor uh, many years ago, decades ago, uh, my business mentor, he made a lot of his money on dropshipping. So I'm not saying that dropshipping doesn't work. It's just, is it the easiest way to get make money? I just don't think it is. Um, I just think that there are easier ways to make money. I think dropshipping is quite hard and competitive. And I think that... Uh, university uh, as an alternative to that is probably much better and having a nine to five life um what's <laughs> what um the last girl i dated uh said that a basic life i mean i don't think working a nine to five job is basic at all it can be quite nice actually um when i worked at a fortune 50 company i was treated like a prince um yeah, they treated me like royalty uh, because they wanted to keep me at the company. So I don't think that's basic at all. It's quite nice, actually. Um, you know, a lot of companies these days, if you're an engineer, you could you get unlimited holiday time. I mean, what's better than that, right? So, um, yeah, so the typical um, person that's going to fall for these social media uh, finance scams are the poor, the dumb, and the young, you know? And I've noticed a lot of the, the poor and the dumb and the young come from countries like Poland, America, Germany, in the poorest areas, right? So it's never some rich kid's son that <laughs> falls for Crank Gardone or, uh, or uh, Hustlers University, Andrew Tate. It's always a poor kid. <laughs> it's never the kid from Beverly Hills. <laughs> That's why it's so humorous for me because uh, if these were such great business ideas, right? Then why wouldn't uh, you know the sons and the children of w wealthy, you know, middle class uh, people, you know, do these uh, attend these classes? Or you know, the truth is because uh, their parents a would laugh at them, their fathers who you know know how to make a lot of money. Uh, they would laugh at them and that it's ridiculous and stupid and uh, get rich schemes and Because poor people are the only people that are dumb enough and young people that are dumb enough are the only people that are gullible enough to believe this nonsense, right? so uh, If you come from money if you know how to make money if you're smart enough to go to a top university an Ivy League University This is all just hilarious nonsense, you know uh, coming from, you know, perspective like that. Um, yeah. So, I want to just show by example. Uh, I want to show my friends in, the, in Poland and Germany. Um, and I'd say the less privileged kids. The kids that didn't come from money. Didn't come from a middle class background. That didn't have every advantage uh, that maybe I had growing up. Because I'll tell you the truth. I'm not like Iman Ghazi or uh, Andrew Tate. I'm not going to pretend I'm, I, I grew up poor. I'm poor. I'm not poor. Okay? I have a huge safety net. Uh, that's the reason why I'm an entrepreneur. I'll tell you that I'll be 100% honest. Um, the reason why I can take such huge financial risks is because... Uh, if I mess up, I have a safety net. My, at the end of the day, uh, I can sleep at, on, at my parents' house and I can recover uh, from my losses. Um, my parents will help me. 
um, yeah, I mean, that takes away, you know, one thing that I really hate about poor, young, dumb people is that they have this weird sense of independence, of false independence. I call it false independence. I call it false independence because they're so obsessed with doing things alone, doing things by themselves without help. A lot of these young, dumb, poor people. But the thing, the fact is, rich people and the children of rich people, they're not independent. They have a huge safety net. They have uh, Ivy League universities and guidance counselors and rich uncles and, and aunts and moms and dads that are helping them every step of the way. So why, if, you, if you're already disadvantaged and don't have those resources, and those people have all these advantages, why would you want to play the same game they're playing with uh, fully independent, without any advantage? I think that's ridiculous. I think that's stupid. If you're already disadvantaged, you're poor, dumb, and young, then why not take every advantage you can get to succeed? Because the fact is, more than likely, more, you're, the odds are against you. You know, I understand the person, I more understand the person that wants to give up, you know? Oh, I come from X and Y village. Oh, I, I grew up poor. My parents were not that rich, so I'm gonna give up. I'm just gonna have an easy nine to five job. I'm not gonna even try. You know, I'm gonna have a nice life and then I'm gonna retire and I'm gonna retire at 65 and, uh, you know, maybe and have my 1.2 holidays per year or whatever. Um, you know, that's not uh, such a bad life. I, I'm not even uh, putting to shame that kind of life. I, it's quite actually uh, nice. Uh, coming from as an entrepreneur who works almost seven, six days a week. Um, that sounds actually very nice a lot of times. But um, I, I know if you're watching this video and you're subscribed to my channel, you probably can't be happy with that lifestyle. So that's why you're watching my videos. The fact is, this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It doesn't, eh, the world doesn't care how independent you are. The world doesn't care how poor you were, you, you were raised, how dumb you were, how young you are. The world doesn't care about that. If you went to a good university or a bad university, the market, that's the beauty of the free market and the free market system. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares who your daddy is. All that matters is the product. The product has to be good. The product, product is good, you're gonna make money. That's, that's the beauty of the free market and why it's such a beautiful thing. The winner takes all. And loser, no matter, doesn't matter who your daddy is, you're the one who's gonna suffer. It's a really beautiful thing to me. Okay, so why? two cities okay so you have new york city we call uh, locals we call it gotham city and then we have berlin old berlin right i call it berlin like burr it's cold <laughs> so two very distinctly different cities and in some ways similar cities so New York City what's special about New York City it is the world's richest richest city world's richest and most powerful city well rich and powerful in what way rich I mean in terms of in terms of are uh, the municipality of the city, uh, that's not true. Uh, New York City is probably near bankrupt many times. That's not how what makes New York City rich. New York City is rich because we have all most billionaires in the world. And why is that um, so important? Because for every billionaire, you need a thousand millionaires to support the billionaires. So 
But yeah, if you have something like, I think there's 150 billionaires, or I don't know what the number is. It's definitely over 100. Then that means you have hundreds of thousands of millionaires. The population in New York City is 10 million within the city and 10 million outside that come in to commute. So that's 20 million total. Berlin is 4 million total, roughly, municipal, the municipal uh, area. So you have the world's richest city, the world's most powerful city, because we have the most rich people in the entire world. If you're in anybody in your country, in your region, in whatever niche you're in, you're going to have a home here, all right? So if you're the, you're the best plastic surgeon in Greenland or, I don't know, Germany, you're going to have a house in New York City. Why? It's a prestige thing. It's like... Uh, a lawyer that has to have, you know, a Mercedes that all of them have seem to drive S-Class Mercedes. Or, or a Bentley or Rolls Royce. It, it's a status symbol. So in the same regard, if you're, if you're a power player, you're a billionaire, you got to have a house in New York City. That's just, doesn't matter. If you're, whether you're from China, where you're from Japan, you got to have it. So that attracts the money. And why do they come here? It's a brand. New York City is a brand, right? It's you don't bet against New York City. That's what we say, because you're gonna your bet's gonna fail, eventually. So another thing, what makes America so great, is the U.S. dollar, right? U.S. dollar that's backed by all petrol uh, business, all petrol trades, every kind of transaction across the globe is settled in U.S. dollar. Right? Because U.S. dollar is backed by U.S. military. So these are all the reasons why America, and more specifically New York City, is the city you want to uh, headquarter your business, your operation, whatever. Right? So Berlin is in another way um, a, a kind of reflection of New York City in Germany. And why, why is Germany so important? Because Germany is the capital... Of Europe, right? It is. It, it is the Rome of Europe, right? Just like New York City is the Rome of the Western world. So, what makes Berlin so special is that it's poor and sexy still. <laughs> At least uh, that's how it, they're trying to sell it still, right? And that just means that it's on an upward trajectory, right? It's uh, gentrifying. Right? So it's on an upward uh, momentum. And what's most important for me is that it's in close proximity to Eastern Europe, i.e., the promised land just like the leaders of this country a hundred years ago and even before that I look towards the East for my fortunes you know if the Ukraine war never happened I would probably be in Kiev or Lviv or Kharkov right now but because the war uh, it really stunted my plans, so I'm still in Berlin. But it just uh, means I had more time to to plan my uh, my 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 approach, and it gave me more time to think about my implementation. So there are benefits to uh, having um, a headquarters in two cities. The labor is significantly cheaper, especially skilled labor. Especially skilled labor. So programmers. Now, I mean, one of the reasons why uh, labor is so cheap here is because you guys have a good social health care system. You guys have a, an EU blue, blue card, which allows Indian and Chinese engineers to be easily imported for your businesses. Now, we don't have that. Our green card system is a lottery system. 
we can't just import engineers willy-nilly from India. Um, it's actually quite a process and it costs a lot of money. You have to sponsor uh, the visa in America. In Germany, you guys have a more laissez-faire immigration policy, which is, uh, as a tech entrepreneur, is very attractive. And again, the engineers are half the price in Germany and Europe than in America. That doesn't mean you're getting oranges to oranges. You, it's apples to oranges. Yeah, the engineers are better in America, you know, in Silicon Valley, New York. And it's probably so. Objectively, they are probably better. They went to better universities, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, you know, Stanford. These are universities that, that output good engineers like, uh, like an uh, assembly line. You don't have that the same in Europe. You guys don't have a education system that's uh, geared for success, for economic success, success like we do in America. Uh, but, but the prices are cheap. And that's where I see opportunity. And what did I say uh, earlier? I think I said earlier, I'm not sure. Um, and in a tech business, your engineers are your own, your most important resource. It's more important resource than your IP. It's more important than everything else, your inventory, whatever, anything. Your engineers are everything. This is why companies like Google and Facebook, even when they don't need the engineers during uh, the good times when interest rates were low many years ago, they just hired engineers without even the need for them. Right? And a lot of these engineers probably did nothing all day, but they needed to, but they didn't want their competitors to have those engineers. And that's why human resource is so important in the tech business. Right? And it's the same in the startup world as well. Okay, and another big reason why uh, I chose New York City and Berlin uh, Europe and North America and these two major cities is that th there today it's now possible with low cost uh, long haul carriers like Norwegian and uh, Level XL and before Air Berlin and I mean there are so many uh, airlines now that uh, do the long haul low cost it's possible to fly round trip uh, for 250 bucks. So this allows me to uh, commute between New York City and Berlin. Uh, before, um, these two cities were much farther away because the world is now a lot smaller place. Uh, flights are a lot cheaper. Um, it's possible to fly direct right out of my um, house in New York. Within 30 minutes, I could get to JFK Airport, and I'm home in Berlin within eight hours, you know, nine hours. I think that's, uh, that really makes the world a lot smaller. And if in the case that I lose my uh, visa, uh, I could maintain a tourist visa and still spend half my year in, Ber in my home in Berlin. Uh, this really solves a lot of problems. Also, um, so the reason I... I, I explained that um, why, so I saw the statistics, there are roughly about 350,000 millionaires. Uh, in New York City, all right. Now these are 350,000 customers that I can sell to, right? So I'm going to probably launch some luxury businesses uh, one business I was thinking of is an exotic car rental business. Not exactly exotic, but uh, a vintage sports car rental business. Um, the typical type of customer for that kind of business is a millionaire. Uh, someone with a, l a little bit more money. Uh, not only millionaires, but you, know, you have to have some uh, expendable income to be renting an expensive car. So, um, uh, in a city like New York City, that kind of business can be well supported. If you know the luxury car rental business or the exotic sports car rental business, you have to ha be operate in a city that can support that kind of business. Uh, in a city like New York City, you could support it. In Miami, yes. But uh, in Wichita, Kansas, no, right? 
So th that's a clear understanding of your market. Your market can support certain types of businesses and, and it won't support others, right? So a, uh, a, a supercar rental business probably wouldn't work in Berlin, right? Because it's poor and sexy, but it would work here. So this is wh why you get two sides of a coin, right? So yeah, the kind of business that I run here are probably can be quite disjoint from uh, the businesses I operate here. Um, last thing I want to say on that note is my dad taught me something when I was really young. Um, it was it really stuck with me. He said in New York and in businesses like finance and in banking, you're, you're handling lots of money, right? You're, there's a lot of traffic that's going through New York City, right? Uh, and a lot of money going through New York City like we talked about earlier, right? All you need to do is just, in, in that situation where you have a torrent of money passing by you, all you have to do is just stick out your hand and stick out a little spoon. And if you just capture a small amount of that flow, you'll be a wealthy man, right? That really stuck with me. It's a, it's a, it's one of the more obvious and simple um, things to understand that that's why you want to be in a mar large market cap, uh, in a large market, sorry, um, like New York City. Um, and why it makes sense to be in a, Place like New York City. That's why in places like China and India, it's much easier to become a billionaire because your market is so huge, right? And that's why this is so significant. And this is so significant, right? I hope that's clear. And uh, I hope um, you'll join me on my next episode.